Go ahead. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Boy, you are too funny. Oh my gosh. Hello everyone, this is Joy Bell. And this is your man T Bell. And this is Life After Love, Episode 3. We are so happy that you're joining us again today. We don't have our co-host Jackson. He was a little busy last time. Yep. So he's with Nana and Papa. Yep. But welcome back to our show. And I think this is going to be a good topic. Well, I hope it will be. Um... But before we start that, I want to start with the inspirational moment. Well, my inspirational moment or uplifting moment. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse my throat bothering me a little bit. But, um, so this moment, this is why I had to put moment because I didn't want to stick to like just a song or a quote or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. But my uplifting moment today was actually the podcast from the love hour which one the one with um the brother told his testimony jason fredericks yeah jason fredericks so of course you know as we said before you know that we're big fans of kev on stage and mrs kev on stage they're a couple and they have a podcast the love hour mm-hmm. and so they had a podcast where the brother was brought on and he talked about um a cancer which i'm not going to say because i know i'm going to pr- mispronounce it but um and he told his testimony <laughs> <clears throat> and how his family dealt with it um his children i think his wife they were separated at the time and just his extended family yeah it was so powerful um it was a lot of crying i just couldn't help myself i was just boohoo crying and um when he shared his testimony of how he got through through because at that time when he was diagnosed um in his cancer he was at stage three which was the highest for the cancer that he had and it was a cancer of his bones Mm -hmm. i believe but um kev was so mad because melissa it was her idea to have it and he was like i didn't want to do this melissa but it was such an amazing amazing podcast to hear not you know it's always powerful to hear someone's testimony but to hear a man talk about it and he talked about you know he was very very vulnerable he talked about being alone and having to go through the things that he had to go through and you know when he got sick and how it was hard for him to get around Mm -hmm. so um but he came through he's on the other side he still has doctor doctor's appointments Mm -hmm. but it was so uplifting you all um especially if you um if you've ever been sick or if you're sick now or um if doctors have given you bad news or anything like that or if you're just a family member of someone it's just something very good to listen to you can see it on facebook or um what's it on youtube Mm -hmm. um or listen to them their own podcast so it's the love hour but it's very very uplifting um it's it's a, it's over an hour, so it's Most pretty long. That episode specifically. Yeah, I think it was. It was over an hour. But what was the name of it? And it had something to do with health and, and sickness and, and, and health. sickness and health because it's part of your vows mm-hmm. <clears throat> and sticking through. Because I believe, which was very interesting, that they were on him and his wife were on the road to separation, and his sickness actually brought them back closer together, and she was there for him. So it's very, very good. Um, unfortunate that he had to go through it, but it was a great, great podcast, and I suggest everybody check it out. Amen. Before we go to T Bell Rants, though, let me say that we are on Spotify and, and Apple. Apple. Oh my Apple gosh, podcast. that is so great! Can we insert some claps? Yeah, our own claps. Mm-hmm. It's easier to edit. Whoop whoop! See, they're gonna take us out now because he up here doing his own claps instead of inserting the noise. But that's very, very awesome. We were like very excited. Yes. Well, especially Spotify because it happened so fast. Mm-hmm. And then it took forever, Apple. So I was like, maybe they're gonna say we can't do it. Pretty much, a week. it took about a week. Yeah, so we're on both of them. So now you don't have to look on Facebook. I mean, you should still. We want you to look on Facebook and YouTube and also. 
listen to it in your car. So now there's no excuse that you can't see us or hear us or whatever you prefer. Yep. Whether you Apple or Android, you can check us out on the web. We are available. So please check us out on the pod. Um, when you search for us on the podcast, it's the life the after. Love. The, the Life After Love podcast. Yeah, the life after. So you have to put the, even though we say life after love, is the life after love. Because I was trying to search for it. I was like, I can't find it. Or just go to one of our pages and click the link and then just save it to your bookmarks. It'd be easy that way. And follow us on there because you can. Well, I know on Spotify you can follow us and I have to figure out how to do it on the Apple one. Or subscribe or whatever it is so you can get the updates when we release them. But we're trying to do them weekly. Prayerfully, we've been we, doing good, pretty good, pretty good. Lately. This is our last week without a child, a new baby. So, yep, that's why I'm so quiet in the house right now. Yeah. So, T bear rents. Well, for this week, I was talking. Oh, I'm sorry, boo. Yeah, go ahead. You already know what I'm about to say. No, go ahead. I got my Apple Watch. Check me out. Right after she counted, it? right after she counted your boy out, but I came through hooping in that thing. He did. He caught me off guard. We had, um, we were able to get a weekend to ourselves. Thank you, Nana and Papa. We just have great grandparents. We have to do a show about grandparents, how they stand in the gap. But um, so yeah, so he surprised me, and I got my Apple Watch. So I can't talk about the Apple Watch anymore. This the Pandora bracelet is on the background. I'm just letting you know now. Y'all see how mean he is to me. I'm just saying. The Pandora watch, Pandora bracelet is cheaper than the Apple Watch. But you wanted that more than the Pandora bracelet. So, anyways, I do have my Apple Watch. So, if you see me do a little bit of this, a little extra of this, that's because I'm trying to show my Apple Watch off. I'm still trying to learn it. So, mm-hmm. I love it though. Now I'm trying to get him on the bandwagon. He's not really sold. Five dollars at Walmart. You can't beat it. Okay, T Bell Rants. So I was talking with um someone and we were just talking about marriage and life and love and how you think you would think most people with money they would be happy, but sometimes it don't always come out like that. So I started thinking about our situation where, you know, with the hospital bills and the credit cards and of course we like looking at houses and moving or whatever the case may be, but after all of that, I just came to the conclusion that I feel like I'm really happy with where we are. I mean, of course I want more, but I feel like in this season where we are right now, it's a really good place because, you know, you and me, we're in a really good place. I feel like with Jackson, we're doing pretty good. Um, I know people like to ask us, oh, you ready for the next baby? No, we're not. Physically, we got everything prepared and in order, but I mean, can you really get prepared for another baby? But I just feel like we are in a really, really good place, and I'm, like, really happy. Like, money isn't driving my happiness right now. I just feel like I'm just in a happy place. So, what's your rent? My rent is, thank God for the blessings. Mm. For where we stand to the, I've learned, Paul said, I've learned in whatever state to be content, and I'm very content. My rant is, I want to thank Jesus for putting us in this situation where we are not because God knew. I don't think you're doing a rant. I think you're doing praise and worship mm. at this moment. Don't you stop my praise, baby girl. <laughs> God knew what he was doing and putting us in this season, but I want to say it's temporary. Hey, man. <laughs> where we're going, where we're going, I mean, going. Mm. <laughs> You could be going forward. Yeah, they, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We're go- moving forward, Israel and New Breed. Yes, Jesus, yes. So my rant is, don't give up. Don't stop the fight. Keep the faith. Learn how to be content and thank God every step of the way. Amen, Sister Joy. Amen. Amen. I'm going to keep it short today because I know this topic is important. But thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so can I add to the... I yes, guess? yes. Jump in the shout. Jump in the, the shout. The praise yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, worship. Yeah, yeah. So... I guess what you're what you're saying your rant is that money doesn't it make doesn't you drive happy. your happiness. It doesn't. I mean, it helps things get better. Yes. But I'm saying for me right now where we are, I know that's not the root of our happiness. I mean, you know Jesus is the center of my joy, but money is funny. 
And sometimes it don't want to be friends with you. But right now where we are, I'm happy. So I would agree that money shouldn't drive happiness. Because there's some people that have a lot of money but are really miserable. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, but I don't know. Why do you think that? But that's our goal, like always, like. But we gotta have money. But to, with, to as me. the in the, the famous words of um, Puff Dad or whatever you call his name now, and Biggie Smalls, more money, more problems. That's true. I mean, you. But when you get more, you spend more, and it requires more. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's like you know, if I if I had a million dollars right now. It, it, it will be a blessing and a headache at the same time. You know, you'll pay your tithes. Uh, you might uh, pay a car off or pay a house off. Definitely pay your credit cards and student loans off. But it's like, um, on the backside, you know, somebody going to always want some money from you. Somebody going to come um, trying to, trying to maybe trying to rob you, whatever the case may be. So it's just like, some people might struggle at times, but they're probably more happier than the person living in that mansion. And on top of that, a lot of people, I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people I see once they get um, money, where they get a lot of money, Mm -hmm. um, and you and the family, it causes you, you start having to pull away more from your family because then you have to keep up with that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you get more money, then you start looking at more expensive houses, and then you're not working to just... You're working because you have to work. You're not working just because. Mm -hmm. So you have to go and miss out on stuff with your family. Mm -hmm. Because you done set up this certain lifestyle that you have to keep. Or you're going to end up losing the house or not being able to make payments. Or or you won't be able to enjoy the house because you're so busy um, out there working. I remember you said something one day because I was, uh, you know, me being asleep most of the time since I work at night. You were saying I would. It might be a little better. To um to deal with you being at being so sleepy most of the time, if at least the paycheck was compensating <laughs> for it, which is it's which is it makes sense because um you know if you're working so hard you you're trying to pay for all this stuff you got to keep up with you know the maintenance of your lifestyle but it's like okay if I'm not around I understand at least can the money temporarily or at least fill in a gap where. You feel like something is missing because, you know, money can't really hold you at night. Money can't, um, you can't pay to get your time back. So it's like, I'd rather be content where I am now than so busy trying to chase money and I ain't here for my family. Yeah, it's no fun to sleep all the time and still struggle. It's true. So I respect where you're coming from. But anyways, thank you for T-Bell Ranch. Hallelujah. Before he shout us out of here. Hey, hey. So today, um, t- today's topic where we sat down and we were trying to think of different topics that we could speak about, which I said I want to talk about this, but Tyler brought it back to my remembrance. And it's important to me to talk about it now because, um, of course, we're about to have our second child, mm-hmm. but I wanted to talk about postpartum depression. And um trying to find something that I did I do it on this phone? I think I did. Um but I want to talk about postpartum depression because I don't know I believe that postpartum information was out there. I mean I know it was out there. And I don't know if it was like heavily pushed to for me to like look up that information or to gather information about it. Um, and even now, after the fact, I do see more people talk about it postpartum depression, but I don't think that it's given as much attention as it should. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a difference. I know there's, I think there's one like, that's called baby blues, mm-hmm. I want to say. And then there's postpartum depression. And um, I think a lot, for a woman, you know, with the hormones, when you're pregnant, your hormones, they amp up, like, a lot. Because I've just never cried so much in my life since I've been pregnant. But Did you do that last time? Or are you talking about this time? I think I'm more emotional this time. More hormonal this time, I guess. But um, 
after you had that baby, then your hormones like drop drastically. So it's just the changes that can affect you. But that postpartum, oh my goodness, it is a beast. And um, I wanted to talk about my experience with it. And um, hopefully, if someone's dealing with it now or think they may be dealing with it, to encourage them to kind of get help. Or for people who see someone going through it or not quite can't quite figure it out to kind of help them. So, I found it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just say, um, I found this website that talked about what are the symptoms of postpartum depression. And it said... And I was going to go through this to tell you some of my symptoms that I had. But um, feeling sad, hopeless, empty, or overwhelmed, crying more often than usual or for no apparent reason, worrying or feeling overly anxious, feeling moody, irritable, or restless, oversleeping or being unable to sleep when her baby is asleep, having trouble concentrating, remembering details and making decisions, experiencing anger or rage, losing interest in activities that are usually enjoyable, suffering from physical aches and pains, including frequent headaches, stomach problems, and muscle pain, eating too little or too much, withdrawing from or avoiding friends and family, having trouble bonding or forming an emotional attachment with her baby, persistently doubting her ability to care for her baby, and thinking about harming herself or her baby. So... After I had the baby, when I had to go to the doctor and when I had to take Jackson to the doctor, they would send me a questionnaire to fill out. Mm -hmm. And they would ask me different questions. And it's pretty much how I'm adjusting to motherhood. And so, J Tyler and I went to an appointment. Is this the one with Jackson? I can't remember if Jackson came. I think he did. Because he was a newborn, so I'm sure he did. Mm -hmm. So we came to an appointment, and um, ooh, that little little thing is moving down there. But um, we went to an appointment, and I filled out the survey. And the doctor, well, I was I was saw my midwife. Her name is Sabrina. I love Sabrina. Ooh, ooh, shout out to Sabrina. So um, she was like, um, you scored pretty high on here. And Tyler was, and so she, I was like, oh, but there's nothing wrong with me. And so she looked at Tyler, and Tyler was like, yeah, I think something going on. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm <laughs> like, you just throwing me under the bus. And <clears throat> so she was like, yeah, I think you need to talk to some counselors. She gave me a list of counselors. And I was like, what's wrong with me? I couldn't figure it out. And the more and more, like, when I read that list and the more I was reading up on postpartum depression, I was like, oh, my gosh, this might be true. Oh, my goodness. So, for me, I didn't sleep at all. It was like sleep deprivation almost because I didn't go to sleep when Jackson went to sleep. Even though we had help, people would come over and they'd be like, oh, you just go upstairs and take a nap. I'll go upstairs and look at TV. I just couldn't go to sleep. I was always worried. I was anxious. I feel, you know, to this day still that I wasn't, I didn't form a bond like I wanted to with Jackson because I was just so focused on, oh, I just need some rest, but then I wouldn't go to sleep. But you could just keep him so I can just, you know, mm -hmm. focus on myself. Right. And, um, of course, I stopped answering calls. I wouldn't call people back. And um, I feel like a lot of my relationships kind of changed after that <clears throat> because, you know, I wasn't talking to them or I wasn't calling people back. And I couldn't quite put it into words because it wasn't anything I've ever experienced before. And I can understand how it could hurt somebody's feelings when you're reaching out to them and they're not responding to you. But this is one reason that I really want to talk about postpartum depression because if you know somebody, you know their true character, like, just don't give up on them. Like, just be patient with them because it's definitely not something easy to... Bounce back. To, yeah, it's definitely not. If I could snap my fingers and just be like, oh, I'm okay. Because in my mind, I thought I was okay. Mm -hmm. I thought that... 
this is just me being a new mom and adjusting. I didn't know until, like, I talked to Tyler and I was talking to my friends. And they were like, yeah. And then I think one day they actually came and got me at the house. And I went to um, my friends, uh, Kedra and Kim, took me to Auntie Jackie's house to talk to me. And, um, and let me stop. Normally, you be, you, you know, we go over there and be there all night. But I think you was going for like two hours, maybe less than that. And you just came right back home because you didn't feel like being out no more. Yeah, so it was bad. And then I didn't want to go back to church. I was dreading going back to church. I was like, oh, I don't want to go. I didn't. The first night I went back to choir rehearsal, I think I cried before I even went there because I was just like, and I love to sing. I love the choir, but that postpartum depression was not a joke. And, um... It was just very, very rough. And it, I was scared to tell people because I felt like <clears throat> when people think of, and I know when I thought of postpartum in, initially, I thought, oh, you trying to kill your child. You know, That's what people think, you know, or you want to harm your child, you want to harm yourself. Mm -hmm. And I was scared to tell people because when I would tell them, then they would be like, oh, okay. Um, you just, They just hear depression. Yeah, that's They like, don't understand. Do you want me to keep uh, Jackson? And I'm like, well, I mean, I need to take care of my, I mean, I do, you know, I, I'll take help when I, I need it, but I'm telling you because I want you to support me, not because I need my child take it away from me. I don't know, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. So I was wondering, Tyler, like, what was your experience? Cause I never, I'm really, he really threw me a curveball when we was in the doctor's office. And I don't know if we ever addressed it, but I was like, so you think I got postpartum? Like, he literally spoke up. No, so I was, the doctor was talking to Joy, and I was sitting back in my seat, like, because I, I, for me, I was just like, I never, you were, you were a little snappy, so I didn't feel like I could just be like, boo, you're depressed, and you're this, and you're that. I think one time we may have been talking and I might have mentioned it, but it wasn't like a full-blown, let's sit down and talk about it and let me discuss what's wrong with you. So when we were in the doctor's office, I felt like that was the only opportunity I had to put it on the table. So, I, you know, you were um, a little more snappy. You really didn't feel like getting out the house. You didn't want to do as much. You didn't really want to be bothered. You, sometimes you didn't want to eat. But for me... I, I know I was very impatient. I didn't understand it. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I just was like, "You, you mean you don't want to? You don't want to go get dressed, take a shower, and brush your teeth, and go? You don't want to go out to dinner?" I was like, "We need so, somebody else is watching Jackson. Let's go have mommy and daddy time." You, what, what you mean you don't want to eat? You know what you mean, Jackson? You hear him in there crying. What you you don't want to go take care of your child? And you were just like, "I want to, but I just don't have no motivation right now." I didn't think you were like suicidal or anything like that, but. I felt like I was conflicted because I was so busy, like, thinking, okay, I, you know, Jackson, I got to take, try and take care of him. Then I got to try and get my mind wrapped around going to work, but I also got to be patient with my wife. So for me, it was kind of, it was kind of a difficult place because it's like, okay, you know, your wife isn't feeling like herself. So I'm like, okay, I got to be patient with her, but I can't just say, oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. Like, I can't force you to go out the house. I can't force you to take care of whatever needs to be done. And you were just kind of like, yeah, I don't feel like doing that or I don't feel like going here. But I feel like the more I would try and push, you know, the more irritated you would get because it was like, I'm trying to tell you. And I feel now I think about it, I probably wasn't listening because I, I was like most people. I didn't understand postpartum depression. I hear about it. We talked about it all the appointments, but to me, it just didn't make as much sense. Being in the midst of it, I was just like, you know, I'm thinking you were doing this last week. Why are you not doing it this week? What's you know, what's the problem? And you were just saying you. It really didn't click for me until you were trying to explain it to somebody. Just like I just don't feel like myself. You know, I'm in my right mind, but physically, I just don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I just want to be at home. I want to be with my child. And I just don't want to be bothered. Like, people call me. I don't want to, you know, I'll talk to them later. And I'm just like, why are you answering the phone? Call them back. They care about you. They trying to talk to you. They they want to um, come see you. They want to come hang out with you. You're just like, I just don't want to be bothered right now. And for me, it was just like, okay, as a husband, do you want to be bothered with me? Do you want to, you know, do you want to do anything with me? And I just, I just still couldn't understand it. 
like I was ignorant like most people. I mean, I know for depression, but the postpartum depression, I was just like, I still just couldn't wrap my mind around it until that time where you was just like, I can't explain it. I can't, you were kind of feeling better, but you was like, I just can't explain how I'm feeling. I just don't feel like myself. I can't explain it. I can't put it into words, but I'm seeing the actions. So that's why when we went to see Sabrina and she was asking, I was just like, no, it's not all good. Like, you might have good days and bad days, but I was like, overall, you know, it's it's not all good. So, I mean, I just, I knew I had to uh, tread lightly, as they say, <laughs> because I didn't know, how, I didn't know how, to, it was scary because I didn't know how to approach you. I couldn't just joke with you. I couldn't just be straightforward with you. So, it's like, which version of a, a conversation can I, you know, approach you with without causing an argument or whatever? And I knew every argument we may have had or disagreement was circled around, um, the postpartum depression. I know you wasn't mad at me. I know you wasn't mad at Jackson. I know you wasn't mad at uh, anything else going on. Like some days you'd be mad. Some days you'd be um, more emotional. You might cry. And I just, like I said, I just couldn't understand it. Like that's where I was. And I mean, I was just ignorant, simply put. Yeah. During the whole time. I think I was too. I just, I don't think you go into, you know, you're just so happy going up to that moment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you just excited. You don't expect to go through this phase of postpartum. I mean, I didn't. Right. I thought we were going to come home to this bundle of joy and just and was going to be. We just going to bounce back like we was doing the day exactly. before we had the baby. We just going to keep it moving. But. I don't think different was going to have a baby with us. Yeah. But, and this is not to scare anybody because um, everybody don't go through postpartum depression. But and you're blessed if you don't, so don't take it lightly. But I just wanted to talk about it because. Especially ones of people of color, we don't really talk about it. talk about things like this. But it's um, it definitely um, is something that you can go through, and if you don't get help, it can it probably it can turn you. into something. Uh, it can be like serious, serious depression. You know, like. You have to address it. And it's two ways of addressing it. It's counseling and medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, even with, I found out through my job. And, and um, another person that helped me out was uh, I came, uh, Auntie Jill, Jill, Elder Jill Mays. Because mm -hmm. um, she sent people as well. And she was someone who came and talked to me and was like, this is what you need to do. You know, or... Because she does stuff with mental health. Mm -hmm. So, um, just, I I really want people to, oh, so counseling and medicine are the two ways that I know of mm -hmm. that you can um, address the postpartum depression. So, that's out there. There's numbers you can call. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I wanted to put it out there, not only because, of course, you know, we have a lot of friends that's having babies. Right. Um Mm -hmm. people that we know and so I wanted to put it out there just in case if you see the signs of somebody that's not the character that they are you know find some way to let somebody know if you gotta do it like Tyler and say in front of the doctor cause you scared what's gonna happen <laughs> I guess and for guys if for the husband or the, the dad don't just say they're just being emotional or short tempered like like she said if it's something you know you you, you know your wife doesn't get this irritated as easy you know she doesn't snap on you like this you need to address that because you know it could get it could get get progressively worse if you don't acknowledge it because um like i said joy was kind of up and down but i just i just knew based on how we were dealing with it it was kind of like if it, if i we didn't address it with sabrina i probably never would have said anything just because i didn't it's like i don't know how to diagnose and help approach this situation i was just like okay i'll let you get over it or grow out of it or is she just being whatever like it's like how do you deal with this i didn't i don't think i even researched it, it was just like oh she eventually get over it she'll grow out of it she'll handle it how she handles it but it's like we i'm we were blessed to be surrounded by the people we were surrounded by mm -hmm. because that helped a lot but my question to you is you said medicine or uh counseling therapy how did you kind of start dealing with it so through my job we have um <clears throat> a 
Next to my job, we have, um, EAP. Which means? Employee Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can, you, you can use the EAP for a certain amount of weeks. And um, it's free. Mm-hmm. For those of you who have, I mean, I don't think Tyler would have put a limit on that though, but it was free. That just make it even better. <clears throat> um, and they had therapists specifically for, um, well, it was under family adjustment, I want to say, but it specifically was addressing postpartum depression. And um, talking about with Sabrina, or it was another, it was a class or that. It was a counselor through. Um, your job. Okay. And your job, they don't have to. Well, I mean, they know now because I'm telling it. <laughs> but they don't. <clears throat> they don't have to know why you um why you're there. Mm -hmm. Um, but you get so many sessions a year for free, and um, they work with you. So for me, which Tyler doesn't even know. So I would just do it. Oh, you were doing this at work? Yeah. Oh no, I, yeah, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. Just going through work, um, doing it through my lunch, my lunch time. Me with the lady that I found somebody that was close to my job, and she was an amazing therapist. Oh, my cousin Jessica, she was also very helpful. Um. And so, look, I'm just thinking of people now. And um, Miss Tashika was good, too. But, yeah, so, anyway, so Jessica helped me a lot about that. And, um, because you be nervous. Like, you feel, I I felt like something was seriously, like, I was broken. And I wasn't going to be able to get back to who I who I was. And I think, because people be like, oh, you look good. You don't lost a lot of weight. And it, I wasn't doing that. So, it was probably because I wasn't eating, eating and was just sad or whatever but so for me using the EAP was very helpful then getting back into my normal routine even when I didn't want to go just still kind of pushing through especially you know like with church cuz Tyler I was like Tyler I'm not going back to church I don't know what was going on with church I was just miserable mm -hmm. and Tyler was still made me go and I was like, oh my gosh, why? I don't want to go. But getting back and doing your normal routine, I think going back to work helped. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't sit at, sit at home and just not interact with people. Because they was like, oh, we coming to the house. You don't want to come? Okay, yeah. we'll be there. I'll be there after church. So people she couldn't holding hide. you accountable. Yeah. Yeah. So all of that together. And then, you know, of course, believing in God. Because I was like, Lord, I need your help. I don't know. How I'm going to do this. I felt like a horrible mom, you know. So cause... talk about that more. Why you feel like that? Because I know you, you mentioned earlier you felt like that. But it took a it took a, um impact on your relationship yeah. with Jackson. I feel like it impacted my bond with Jackson because um, I just, I just wasn't myself. And... So a lot of stuff, I guess that I had this hard time of, I want to say, I felt like he started getting attached to, I know I got attached to his dad, his grandma, and it just wasn't me. Like, you know, when you see babies. And I know it was because um, our bonding got affected because I would literally just like not want to do anything. I wanted to take care of him. But I just did. I was tired all the time because I wouldn't go to sleep, like never, pretty much. And then of course he slept during the day, which would have been perfect. Like he was sleeping during the day, so that would have been perfect. But um, I just wasn't sleeping. And then at night he up, he crying. So I just didn't want to like do anything. I, you know, I would change him feed him stuff like that but other than that like you know you want to play with your child and stuff like that in the beginning it was just very very hard for me and I feel like now um our bun is not as strong um as it probably could be so it really bothers me still to this day um 
which is probably why I'm so obsessed with trying to make it right with uh, Kennedy. Mm-hmm. But um, I always say I was like, I just want to be a better mom. I don't feel like a good mom. And, you know, people tell me all the time, like, Joy, it's okay. Because baby, it's like babies don't really remember this, you know. I mean, like, I didn't abuse him or anything like that. But it's just, and I like I wanted to breastfeed. And I just, I just didn't have the energy to do it. On top of him being in NICU, mm-hmm. I think that kind of threw a hit. Because when, um, when I was looking up postpartum depression, some of the things that make you more likely to... Um, go through postpartum is when you have trauma either while you're pregnant or right after like losing a loved one right after you have um someone or like having medical complications during pregnancy or afterwards with the baby Mm -hmm. so you know nick you going home without your baby not being able for him to be in the room it was just a lot going down there seeing him thank god i didn't see him the first time tyler did i couldn't walk down there but Going down there, he got tubes going down there. Like, he's not eating. We feed him through the tube. It was just a lot. Mm -hmm. And every day we went down, there was something new was wrong. And I was feeling like it was my fault as to why he's going through all this. Like, what did I do wrong when I was pregnant? And I mean, it was so bad. I was like, because I got my membrane separated, which I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. I don't know. But anyways, I felt so violated. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm the worst mom ever. Why did I do this? It's my fault that he came early. It was literally, I couldn't do anything right in my mind. So, all of this helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. And it helped me out with just, you know, other things in life as well. But I just think it's important because... We just have to be there for each other, especially new moms. Um, new moms, because it's an adjustment. I mean, it's in, it can be enjoyable, of course. You know, this new life, and it's a blessing. It's a miracle mm-hmm. that you know it's nothing but God. But for some people, it's an adjustment. And I just want people to, if you see someone that's in that place, to just kind of be there for them and not give up on them that's just my big thing and don't rush or push them yeah and just kind of read up on it um and be say what can i do because um like kedra she was person like she was about to drive me crazy because she was like calling like i'm not gonna stop calling you uh, you go answer my phone calls. What's wrong with you? And I was like, oh my god. And if she couldn't get me, she was calling Tyler. And I was like, Lord, this lady crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it was love, and I appreciate it because you know it's holding people accountable. And then those that's going through, first you have to get postpartum you can't just feel like you have postpartum you have to get a diagnosis it requires a diagnosis Mm -hmm. so once you're diagnosed with postpartum you can try your best to let people know Mm -hmm. then i mean they're gonna understand but you know you i guess you can communicate that's i'm just saying from my experience learning just kind of communicate and let them know this if you feel comfortable this is what i'm dealing with this is what i'm going through that don't mean people understand because i can't i still to this day couldn't explain Oh, I'm hungry. No, I thought it was my stomach. That was me. <laughs> I couldn't explain um, what was going on. I just couldn't put it into words. All you could say is, I don't feel like myself right now. Yeah. And they got to try and understand what you're saying. So, all you can do is communicate. And then, whether or not people accept it, I mean, it is what it is. But I just suggest getting help. Most people won't respect it because they're ignorant about it. You know well, what de- you know what depression is, but I won't say most people won't. I think people who truly care and love you, they'll they'll be understanding and they'll they'll rock with you through it. Even when you come out on the other side, and even if they don't feel like you, you can have that conversation later. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like you handled this right, but just trying to just stick with them through it. Mm-hmm. So, I want to thank everybody that was there for. I say us as a family mm-hmm. because I know Tyler needed that support too. So I don't know if he reached out to people when um 
well, go, well, when I was going through it with the postpartum depression, but like, thank you to our families, and thank you to my friends, and thank you to my husband for standing up and seeing it, because I literally didn't see it. I really just didn't see it, and I just thought everything was good. Mm-hmm. So it kind of opened my until I did that questionnaire, and I was like, "These." I mean, I wanted to be honest, but I was like, "Oh Lord, am I?" I in my mind, I kind of thought, but I was like, "Oh, it's I'm kind of like in the middle range." But she was like, "Yeah, no, this is high." And um, then Tyler speaking up is really what drew attention. Yeah, and I, uh, the reason I I kind of so a lot of people probably based on how we dealt with Jackson probably I know they probably still think I mean. It is what it is, but what but, you mean? That's what I'm trying to Uh-oh. draw it out. Cause when we were, uh, when we were, before we got married, my dad was saying, "All right, it's gonna be your job to protect your wife." I'm like, "What? We need to get a gun? You know, we need to get an alarm system." He was like, "No, like people are gonna attack her emotionally, mentally, and you need to be the one to stand in the gap and protect her from that kind of stuff." So. Um, when we were at the hospital before you had Jackson that Friday night, um, you know, we had 10, 15 people in the room with us, you know, so we all happy, happy, go lucky, but your blood pressure still kind of acting funny. And we had a room full of people and Sabrina pulled me to the side. She was just like, we need all these people out of here because this is not good for her blood pressure. And, you know, we we're trying to get her situated. We're trying to get her calm. Um, we don't want to keep shooting her with medicine, but all of these people that are in here, um, you know, I know you love them, but they can't be in here. So, and at that moment, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I had an email, I mean, a texting blast going on. I had like 50 people. I was texting them all at one time saying, what's the updates? What's going on with the baby? Um, you know, the baby is, uh, it's not coming yet. We in the hospital room, we waiting. So all the people that was there, you know, I was the, had to eventually be like, look, you know, love y'all, but you can't stay in here right now. So then the next day, all those people I was texting, you know, they all want to come to the hospital. And the night before, which I did not like, I don't know what who what nurse that was. And she was like playing God with your blood level. She was like, oh, it's too low. Let's boost it up. It'll go up a little bit. Oh, now it's too high. And she takes like, I, I hated that. Like she was just pumping and pulling, pumping and pulling, pumping and pulling. And as it was going up and down, you know, people were still texting me like, can we come? Can we come? I was like, no, because I don't need nothing else to happen because we're trying to get joy calm. We're trying to get it situated. I couldn't explain all that. I was just like, no, you can't come. We'll see y'all when we see y'all, basically. I know that, that probably rubbed people the wrong way, but I was like, I had to do that because at that time, you know, we're trying to get you situated. And having a million people in the room the next day would just wouldn't have worked in our favor. So I had to be the one that was my version of trying to protect you because I ain't want Lord forbid something would have hap- happened to you on that in that room while they playing with your blood pressure and I would have like lost my mind while they well, and I don't need all these other people around while we trying to do that like yeah so that's why I feel like I had to be a protector and that's why probably people didn't understand what I was doing what I was doing but I don't even know if I said that to you until now mm-hmm. but yeah that's it was what it was at the time, you know? Well, I appreciate it. I didn't know about his Facebook status. <laughs> Facebook status? Until afterwards. All them people I was... I'm not doing that this time. That was just foolish of me. I was excited. I was excited. Who's the first baby? It was. I was too excited. And everybody was like, stay in there. Hang in there. She's co- He's coming. God, let me know when something... Like, I'm like... Every, like, every time something would happen, I'll text. Like, oh, we got to the room. Takes. It was so funny because you told my dad. Who was it? He was like, oh, oh, she got, got an epidural. Induce. No, he asked me. He was like, where we at? I was like, we just chilling in the room. It was like, she got an epidural. Any second now, she's finna pop. My you dad drunk. came up. <laughs> he came up there. It was like maybe like 12 Friday night. Yeah. He waited maybe four or five hours. Went to sleep in the truck. I was like. I thought she was gonna. Be, I thought she was going in. I thought she was gonna be giving the baby, giving them come, letting them come now. Oh, I think the epidural slowed everything down. It fooled but, all of us. Yeah, it was hilarious. But yeah, so I mean, I know this was a more serious episode, but it just needed to be addressed. And so did. you know, my prayer this time is just not to, because you know, 
of course, I've been told that if you've been through it before, you're at a higher risk of going through it again. But I just believe God that everything's going to go great and they want to deal with this. But if Amen. you do see me acting strange... Be Hold patient. Me. Yeah, please be First patient. First of all, be patient. Love me. Amen. And if you if you know me, if you know me, then you know you you have Tyler's number, I'm sure. I don't know too many people that don't. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not answering the phone, just call Tyler. Well, she got this Apple Watch now, so if she if she don't answer, she can't be well, the only thing about the Apple Watch is you can get, be like, oh, okay, I'll text them later. And then you're like, dang, I forgot to text that person back. <laughs> so, or call them back. Yeah. So, because um, that, that's what happened with Taylor yesterday. Mm -hmm. But, um, just be patient. You can call Tyler if I don't answer. But I'm going to do better this time going to answer. Because you know what to expect a little more. Yeah, I feel a little bit more prepared this time. Amen. So, close? any closing words or thoughts? Anything you want to say? Are you ready for this next baby? Nope. People keep asking us, are we ready? And I keep saying, nope. Are, are you ready to be a father to a little girl? I am. I wasn't at first because I wanted my boys. Oh my gosh, y'all. His reaction was horrible. Y'all didn't see his reaction. That's not my reaction. But his reaction was horrible I was to like, the oh. girl news. I was like, oh, okay. So we're going for number three? He was horrible, y'all. Like, for real. I wish I could have recorded him. He recorded me and my happiness. And he looked at me like this. This is so disrespectful. Jackson is not going to like this reaction. <laughs> And I was like, so you're not happy? I mean, it is what it is. I, was, I just thought I was going to be a boy. It did. I did. This girl is going to melt his heart, y'all. I can't wait. Like you melt my heart. Yeah, I think I'm being competition now. I got competition in the house. I still got to make time for you as a wife. Yeah, that's important. For I'm a, I was a husband first before a dad, so that's more important. For new parents, please make sure you make time for your husband and your wife. Don't put that aside just to be on parent duty all the time. Mm -hmm. If you have a people you trust with your children, don't just give your children to anybody. But mm -hmm. people you feel confident, like nothing will happen, they... Gonna have your child back and take care of you. So, thankfully, we have a good amount of those. Um, even if it's just for a night. And if you can get overnight, that's even better. But, um, make time for your spouse. Your husband or wife. Amen. So, before we close, let me just remind you. That we, the love, I mean the life after love Don't podcast. Don't us the love That's hour. why I had to think about it. The life after love podcast. We are now on Spotify. And we are now on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. So if you are an Android user, search on Spotify for the. You can do Spotify on Apple too. Don't do that. If, you, if your platform is Spotify. Search for the Life After Love podcast. If you don't know how to find it, if you can't find it, go to my Facebook page or Joy's Facebook page and make sure you follow it and once you the go link there. On the video. Okay. I am. I am. And if you're an Apple user specifically, on Apple iTunes, search for the Life After Love podcast. If you can't find it, look on my page. And it's a podcast app on the Apple phone. So you didn't can search know that. through there. You showed me that. I didn't know that at first. Yeah. So um, follow both of those. Whichever your preference is. Follow both on. We're trying to build this community so we got more people that can grow and love with us. We're getting ready to try and start expanding. You know, we eventually start bringing on guests. But right now, we're just trying to get our following up. We want to get the Facebook page up to 500 likes. That's the goal right now, right? Yes. So if you see this video on Facebook, if you laugh, if you cry, if you smile, share the video, like the video, because we want more people to, you know, enjoy it. What we're trying to put out there. Yeah. The content we're trying to put out there. And share it to somebody. Hopefully to help someone or that's dealing with it. if you know somebody pregnant, share this video with them. Yeah, or you might see the signs or if 
you know, just leave a comment if it's something that you could add to it because you don't know who might see it and they might be able to read something and it might help them. Mm -hmm. So, if you have anything in addition that you would like to add, please, please add a comment and mm -hmm. share this video. Just leave a comment anyway if you like this video. Right. All right, and I have to give a, a special shout out to my brother Danny. I finally got the sound mixer going, bro. Got my XLRs going. Got my sound recorder going. So we're just going to say you're an honorary producer on this podcast, brother. Yeah, Danny. Hopefully it will blow up so much that you can be our full-time producer. We could pay. Whoop, whoop. That'll be a blessing. Yep. You want to thank anybody? Any closing remarks? No, just keep us in your prayers. Like I said, baby could come any day now, but we're officially... Five days away. Happy birthday, Bailey. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday. She turned nine years old. Happy birthday, boo boo. Her little sweet self. So, and, uh, also before I close, Mama Sean sent me a, a text message. I'll let you read it after. So, but thank you, Mama Sean, for those loving, inspiring words for the podcast. Thank you, Auntie Sean. And I'll let you read it after. We, they sound like incest. He calls everybody mom, and I call everybody auntie. Just be like that, son. But we just love them because they love us so much. Amen. So, the next time you see us, we'll be a party of four. Right now, Jackson is with his, his nana and pawpaw. So, we had a little free time to do our podcast, and he's running wild over there. So, don't We went worry. to the doctor today, so hopefully. We had some good news. Hopefully, we won't be going to the hospital to stay. We'll be coming back home. Because I got two more days to work. Good. Yep. All right. Until next time, this is your man T. Bell. And this is Joy Bell. And this is the Life After Love Podcast. I'm hungry. Hmm? I'm hungry. What are we going to eat? Mm -hmm. I need something to eat. What time is it? I need to be leaving at 10.